Hello, I'm Phil Svitek, 360 Creative Coach. And at the start of every year, it's a chance for us to reset, right? We make New Year's resolutions. We identify things we want to accomplish. We want to identify things we want to be better at and maybe eliminate some stuff, right? But it's also a chance to recalibrate financially. And that can mean a few different things. But today, I'm going to focus on in terms of your salary, right? So as artists, I don't think we do enough of that sort of thinking about how much we should be getting paid for the work that we create. And this is applicable to whether you're a freelancer that works with clients or you have a full-time job and work for a company. Now, that's what I'm going to explore today, right? Now, before I fully dive into it, though, I would like to take the opportunity to invite you to subscribe if you haven't already. That way you get all the various lessons and episodes that I put out right away uh, for free. Thank you if you just did, and thank you if you already were. It truly does mean a lot to me, as I hope it does to you. So, let's get into this, right? At the time of this recording, it is about the end of August, right? And I'm doing this now, but obviously it can apply to any you can use this at any point. But the idea is to start thinking about this months in advance of the new year, right? So new year is the opportunity, but we have to prepare for that opportunity in advance, right? So that's the idea. That's why I'm telling you that I'm recording this at the end of August, because this is when I'm starting to do this process myself and you know, invite you to do it as early as possible before the new year. Okay. So number one is this idea of market research, right? You have to research out there. What are other people being paid for in terms of the same work that you are creating? And of course, you know, in, in the broad sense, there's three different kinds of tiers. There's really high value, high quality, you know, top of line, um, sort of expensive. Then there's the average and then there's the low cost, right? And, you know, you kind of pinpoint where you're at in that spectrum or what you would like to be at. Now, you know, yes, by default, we can all say like, hey, you know, I want to be the most expensive and so forth. But you have to Also, at the same time, be realistic enough of, okay, in terms of that pricing, what is the the output level for people and, and, you know, what level of experience do they have? What services are they offering for that price and so forth, right? So, you know, and that's why step one really is a lay of land. It's research. It's getting to know the landscape of all these different things. You know, so that way you know, A, what's included in terms of what people do in those various tiers, right? And secondly, to know what is being charged slash what someone's making um, as the individual, right? So that's why I'm a strong advocate of this lead time because this gives you that opportunity to really do the research, right? And... You know, there's various ways to do the research, and you should d- utilize as many as, of these as possible, right? Talking to colleagues um, within your industry, uh, both people that you know, and also just, you know, as much as you can, uh, reaching out, you know, and kind of seeing um, people out there, right? I think it's in, be- very beneficial, and many people point to this, like, the more war- we op- the more open we are with this stuff, the better, right? Now, okay, so let's say somebody is not willing to talk to you. Of course, they have their website, um, most likely, right? And so what are they charging for that, right? So start to utilize this. Um, Look at market research, you know? um, A lot of industries sort of have this number out there. Um, You can also look at, you know, jobs out there in the same way of what's out there and what are companies uh, hiring people for this, right? So these are just a few of the ways to be able to get this data for yourself. And, you know, you want to have it as organized as possible so you can compile it and start to see, right? And see what's out there. Um, Then you sort of 
check it, as I said, against yourself. You know, um, what are they doing similarly where they can justify that cost? What are they doing differently? And you start to kind of adjust based on that. You know, uh, the next thing of it is, um, is you start to look at your expenses, right? Like your actual financial situation and determine, you know, what makes sense for you. Because for me, there's certain people that hit me up and they're like, hey, um, I would love to work with you. And I'm like, uh, especially if they're a friend, of, you know, for me, I always try to give friends a discount but there's also a minimum that I need to hit. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense, right? And so I know that minimum for me and either they're able to do it or they're not. But unfortunately, like, I, it, 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 I can't justify doing something, especially with how busy I am and the other stuff that I'm doing for, uh, you know, paying people that, you know, taking on something like that wouldn't make sense, right? So... That, that's that's a, a part of it, knowing what you need to hit for yourself, right? In terms of your lifestyle and also, you know, certain things that you like. Like, what's the, what's the minimum number? What's the ideal number? And, you know, so forth. Uh, which gives you leverage of negotiation, right? Like, if you, if you create it in terms of three tiers, um, in terms of what mentally you would like, like the, the highest number, okay, cool. Um, and in negotiation, if you don't hit that number, you know the middle number that like you're comfortable with, and hopefully you get that. But you know, at a, at a minimum of what makes sense to you, you don't go below that minimum, right? So that's why it's important to know these numbers. Uh, and then you know, once you have this information, right, then it's time to have the conversation, um, and. The conversation in this sense, you know, it's two, two categories, right? Either you're a freelancer or you work for a company. If you work for a company, then it's about having a, a scheduling of meeting to talk about your pay raise, right? And I would encourage you to, in, in pitching this, you know, highlight things that you bring to the table and why you are deserving of this raise, right? Um, that's oversimplified, but that, that's the general idea. You know, same thing with clients, right? Um, preparing clients that like, hey, um, at the start of every new year, you know, I reassess my prices and prices will go up. Now, the the... In, in terms of this conversation, right? It doesn't have to be like the initial um, aspect of it when you first introduce this, but this is where having the benefit of the research comes in because then um, whether you're talking to clients or you know your company, you're able to know what the market value of what you bring to the table is. So it's not just this random thing that you pulled out of nothing. You, you have basis behind it. And, you know, with companies, the, the nice part is, like, you can either, as I said, you either get the number that you're going for or you land somewhere where, okay, this is um, what I'm comfortable with, this is good, or, like, maybe you hit the minimum raise that you're okay with, right? That's why these are important things to know. But let's say they don't go for it. Well, now you also know the market and having done this research, you know the types of jobs out there. So it's an opportunity to apply to those. And oftentimes, you know, the sad truth of the matter is when it comes to work, loyalty really isn't rewarded, uh, believe it or not, right? They don't give high, like you're much more likely to get a pay increase by switching jobs than staying year to year at the job that you're at, which is very sad, but true. Uh, so you know, in doing this research, that's also kind of, you're hedging your bets in that way where if you do have to take on a new job, um, you know what's out there, right? And can do so easier and you know what you would like and you would know, you know as I said, the market and the pay that is being offered for those services. Okay, now switching gear to the client side, you know, uh, 
clients, uh, sometimes they can be, you know, for me, it's a preference thing, right? But for me, the clients that have been with me uh, up until this point, right, I always essentially grandfather them in, you know, at, at a certain price, right? Again, as long as it makes sense for me, like I'm hitting that minimum, then we're good, right? And so I might say to them like, hey, um, this year I can offer you still this discount rate, but next year I'm gonna have to increase it. So, you know, things of that nature. And, you know, part of it is you have to be, as I said, this is why knowing the numbers is important because some of them might walk away. And that's also part of the process. You know, as we grow in our careers, we also have to let certain people go. You know, it's no different than the example I just gave in terms of, you know, if you have a nine to five so-called job, you know, sometimes you might have to switch companies to do that. So same thing in terms of clients, you might have to switch clients um, to progress in your career as a freelancer, right? So it, it, it works in that sense. And as I said, for me, I don't mind quote unquote grandfathering people in at a discounted price for a certain term, but because at least then I'm kind of getting them ready and they, they feel good of like, hey, you know, I, I can have that conversation like, you know, any new clients I take on, this is the price I'm gonna be charging. Uh, for you, I'm gonna continue at this discounted rate um, for another year, but I, after that, I will have to increase it at least, you know, a certain amount, um, but we can determine that later. And that way, yeah, they, they feel good about what they're getting. And again, there might be some questions of like, well, why are you increasing the prices now and so forth? And it's, you know, it's business ultimately and no different of like, yeah, because of inflation, I got to keep up with inflation and costs, costs like that. And also, you know, this is now, you know, last year, these were the market prices. Now this year, they're the market prices and still you're getting quality work and, you know, I'm still 2% below market of what the average is, right? Um, so you can speak very in, in very savvy terms when you have the data. That's why the research component is very, very important. And, you, and that lead time allows you to prepare for these tough conversations. So yeah, you know, that's sort of my quick overview of how to approach this stuff. Um, and I hope it is of benefit and that it works out for you. But as always, if you have any questions or thoughts of your own from experience, you know, throughout, please let me know. I would love to hear from you. And likewise, you know, by just, you know, commenting or whatever, it allows other people to read it. And, you know, we kind of collect all this data for ourselves, right? I mean, that's how I opened up this episode is that the more forthright and open we can be about all this stuff, the the better you know, we all, we, the more we benefit from all of it. So um, yeah, please comment down below or hit me up on social media at Phil Svitek. Um, likewise, if you appreciate what I do um, and think you might benefit from more direct interaction, well, I have my coaching, um, which is available to you. The link is provided down, uh, down in the description. Or if, you know, you would first like to, you know, dip a toe into the water, so to speak, um, before getting a full coaching session? Well, that's what my Patreon page is for, patreon.com slash philsvitek. There's various tiers of support with, where you know you get benefits, um, where I interact with you and others uh, on a more direct basis there. And lastly, if uh, you know you really, like I am an artist and I've, I've written books, I have movies, uh, merchandise and so forth, so that is another way to support me and it does help support this because by that stuff being self-sustaining, I get to learn and make more of it and thus be able to come back here and share it freely with you. So it's a very symbiotic relationship in that way. Anyway, I've talked your ear off enough for right now. Thank you so much. I appreciate you and hope to see you next time.